Hey, how's it going? It's your boy, Challenger Coach Adam Warrior the Isles here, bringing you the 10 out of 10 pick of the patch video, where we are gonna go over our top and up and coming meta pick, so let's get right into it. First up, we've got the strongest jungler in all elos at the moment. Low, medium, high, whatever, and yeah, it's definitely Graves. He is just way too strong when it comes to the farming and scaling game, he's got good dueling too, and his amazing carry potential as he has the damage to actually clean up a fight on his own. When it comes to getting a lead, he just gets way too tanky too, so if you screw up a single gank versus Graves, he's gonna outpower farm you and then he's just gonna outdo you later on which to be honest is one of the reasons why I ban him every single game but in terms of his setup one of the things that makes him so strong is that he's got two that are really really strong lethality for those squishy comps where you can just snowball completely out of control and one-shot people Although to be honest, I think Graves is so strong right now, it doesn't really matter which setup you use, you can even mix and match him a little bit. You can go phase rush lethality and I doubt it even matters that much. And honestly, that's just how strong this champion is. If you're not picking him up right now, you better be banning him like I am. Next up, we got the fire girl who's got a 53.5% win rate right now and a 3% pick rate in plat plus. She's not just a noob stomper anymore. Buffs were just absolutely massive for her. Her team fighting is way better. She got extra survivability and DPS for it, which is exactly what you need for a short range champion who can struggle during the laning phase due to her linear attack pattern she needs to have something that's going to get her those wins after she kind of gets out of the laning phase i used to recommend andy to new players actually or just new mid laners in general in past seasons but this season i kind of stopped because she was actually pretty awful and barely held a 50 percent win rate even in low elo now though she's just a complete beast and very similar to my maokai prediction i think annie's going to be extremely popular in a couple of patches so take advantage of her now which likely you know won't happen because even if I tell you she's really good right now, people absolutely hate playing her. It's kind of like if you're an athlete and it's essentially like you're doing cardio or something. It's incredibly boring, even if it's effective and rewarding. You're just not gonna wanna do it. You're not gonna wanna pick any. But let me know in the comments some better analogies because I think that one's a little bit weak on why you think people hate playing Annie even though it's probably good for them. Also, in terms of her item setup, she's got a bunch of different ones. On screen, you'll see just a basic mage setup that does work pretty well on her, but then you've got protobell variants and then you've got whatever Annie bot slash Jared is doing right Right now and I think he's doing an Archangels with Leandries and Medjai setup it's a little bit wonky but you can use the one on screen if you're looking for something consistent our next champion is gonna be someone that Riot just hilariously over buffed after they completely decimated her in that Taraka she just received buff after buff after buff and is coming back to the meta along with other enchanters sure she's a really strong champion when it comes to anti-dive and that's what the meta is right now and she's also good with full line champions and she can heal tanks and make them pretty much unkillable like if you've got a Maokai or an or with Soraka, they never gonna die. But the reason that she is OP on this patch though, and might even reach God tier in all brackets of play, is Riot took away her intended weaknesses. Back when she was considered, you know, the most busted top laner ever, or not the most busted, but maybe the most annoying, Riot over nerfed her. And so to compensate to make her better support, Riot started taking away her weaknesses. She's supposed to be vulnerable in the early game due to her kind of lower HP on healing people and have a weak laning phase to compensate for her amazing utility and scaling. That's how enchanters are supposed to work. They're supposed to be really good in the late game, but weaker in the laning phase. But none of those weaknesses exist now. She's topping the healing meters every single fight and no one can die. Because of those buffs, she's not really getting low from healing people anymore, and her Q does enough damage for her to bully lane. It's actually pretty incredible. One thing that will help you out though when playing Soraka is remember to swap to Relic Shield and or Guardian when you're in some of your tougher matchups that are trying to all in you. But either way, like Soraka is just a monster in this patch, so I definitely recommend you pick her up. The next champion is actually going to be Bug Boy K6 or Kha'Zix. He's been making a real comeback in Hilo lately thanks to his new setup and it started to trickle down into every bracket now. His Conqueror Bruiser style is pretty well known. Obviously, you know, you get the Conqueror with the Domination for the healing, the Black Cleaver, the Death Stance, and then you're going to grab Q for consistent damage and then the W evolve because it's really, really good. But thanks to a certain EUS Kha'Zix one trick, this setup evolved even further into what we have now, which is taking Alacrity, so you get enough attack speed to auto quickly in between your stealth charges. Then you're going to take Inspiration secondary to help your early game so you don't need to spend money on boots you're gonna grab black cleaver into dust blade and then death stance for better dueling power but still being able to survive and getting a little tanky but it also brings it all together because he evolves r into w and he actually skips the q1 altogether early on the R evolve with this setup just allows you to pull off some crazy gank pass, some juke, some outplays early on, allowing you to impact the game way more often in the early game, which is what the jungle is all about right now, but you still have your scaling because you're Kha'Zix. 
The raw DPS on Q, you don't really miss out on it too much because you get extra passive procs, which is going to be most of your damage. And then because you're stealth, your dueling power is actually still really, really strong. Some of you who have been playing Kha'Zix for a long time who use the Q Evolve might be thinking to yourself you're going to lack some damage without it. But trust me, try it out for yourself. Personally, I like this setup way more and you don't really feel the lack of DPS or damage from not having Q. Although there are some Kha'Zix players who are just diehard assassin setup and will never change. So if you want to look at that one, you can go to our champion pages on our website and still look to one shot people. That means that our next pick of the patch will be Vayne because she's got some really good matchups right now. Ezreal, Kalista, Kaisa, they're all extremely popular, but one of the most important things is one of her biggest lane counters was Misfortune, who was nerfed recently. Due to that lower movement speed, she got hurt quite a bit in the win rate department and it allows Vayne to likely not get auto attacked as often or be able to chase her down in lane once she gets her ultimate. She's also really good into melee champions, which is the meta right now, which is the main reason that Vayne is able to thrive. Sure, she's still kind of bad in laning phase and she does have some easy matchups, but what it really comes down to is right now, if you have an enchanter as Vayne, you can easily hit two items and then annihilate an entire team fight. And yeah, enchanters are coming back and it's gonna be an enchanter meta, so you're gonna see that pretty often. She's also one of the few ADCs that even if you don't have an enchanter, like you got a pike for some reason, She's still useful because she has the ability to peel for herself and she has the single target DPS even without an enchanter to win fights on her own without the need for her team. Though I guess, you know, this kind of inflates Vayne players' egos and I, I think at least once again there's going to be an unforced error where they end, but she's still winning a lot even with Vayne players doing that which just shows how strong she really is. Our next champion is actually going to be another AD carry and it's Ash, which is kind of the complete opposite of Vayne. Ash in general across all brackets of play is performing extremely well though due to her combo combination of DPS and utility, which I guess Vayne just has none of. Although her issues is that sometimes if her team doesn't peel for her, she doesn't get the time she needs to stand there and just throw a hail of arrows before the enemy Talon or Fizz just flanks her and kills her because her support is just off in Narnia doing whatever. This situation though is far more common than you would think and all marksman players can probably relate to that. But luckily, Ash has an alternative setup that can be used in games where the enemy team is too long range for you to DPS properly, or when your team picked zero peeling champions. And the name of that setup is going to have to be her Halo Blades one, where you're going to go Trendy Force and Essence Reaver on top of that. What this build provides, even though it sounds a little bit weird, is that compared to her normal setup, it has way better kiting ability due to the move speed from Phage, it also makes her slightly tankier, and due to the extra volley for her maxed out CDR, it allows her to kite a lot easier. Now, also, because you're going to take Halo Blades, it helps her front load her damage to reach her Q charges faster for those few situations where she's actually going to be able to stand still and auto attack. But more importantly, thanks to the ultimate hunter and the max CDR, her alt goes to around 30 seconds or below, meaning Ash Arrow is up every single wave. Every single wave, you can just throw out an arrow and hope that you get a pick or start a good fight. It's just going to be up way too often. You're going to have so much agency and engage potential in the game, which is completely out of the norm for Marksman because most of them have to wait for their team to start a fight and then they can do something, but not with this version of Ash, making it the perfect setup to maximize her impact on games where marksmen typically can do nothing but just be food. Our next highlight is going to be one of those champions though that likes to farm 80 carries and that's Renekton. He's one of the strongest laners in the game currently and is the definition of win lane lose game or a center champion. Champions like him need to snowball but luckily in solo queue he's pretty darn good at it alright. The big thing about him though and the one thing that I want to point out is his Borg setup. It is pretty popular now and a lot of people know about it and it is finally his most used first item but it's still mostly a 50 50 split between the Black Cleaver first and the Blade of the Rune King first, but let me tell you, the Blade of the Rune King first stat-wise is significantly better by around 2%. You might say, oh, but Mori, that's because Renekton's only building it when he's snowballing, that's why it's better. Hear me out though, alright? You're Renekton. If you didn't snowball, you are useless, and no build will change that. The amount of times I see people go like, you know, oh, I'm losing lane, I'm gonna grab Black Cleaver and go full tank, I'll be useful. You aren't useful. You're actually less useful than Soraka top because you're doing less damage than her, her, and you're not tanking more than she's healing, so you might as well have picked that instead of Renekton. Case in point, if you're playing Renekton, you play 100% to snowball and deal damage, or you shouldn't have picked the champion at all. Speaking of supports though, the next champion is actually going to be El Bardo, or just Bard. Best champion to master in all brackets in my opinion, if you want to carry from the support role, and he's one of the most popular Korean and Chinese support picks in high-end solo queue because of this. One of the things that makes him a little bit intimidating though, is he's got a lot of different item builds, because every Brad player kind of builds something different. Some like full AP with items like Nashers, Leandris, Protobelt, Twin Shadows. He's got his normal, definitely not a support champion build where he pretends to be a support, where he goes Guardian, Redemption, plus other utility items. 
And then he's got his I'ma be a super annoying champion build, which is Deadman's Plate Rapid Fire Cannon. Recently though, there is a new setup that has come to the forefront for Bard. It's doing extremely well and it's his off tank carry build. You're gonna take Omni Stone for the playmaking potential it provides along with the many auto attack steroids it can give. And then you're gonna go Deadman's Plate and follow it up with a Wit's End. The Wit's End here is the key as it gives you such good stats. You got the MR for being tanky against the other damage type. You got the attack speed for the scaling on hit damage too. The reduced MR making you deal more damage from the Meeps. And then the last stat, which is probably one of the best ones on Bard that you likely forgot is even on this item, but it actually has movement speed, which is such a dream for Bard. This setup is one I highly recommend if you're looking to carry games yourself as it gives you a combination of damage, dueling power, and tankiness. So you got a lot of options no matter what the situation is. But even without this new setup, Bard is still extremely oppressive and definitely worth learning. So you can check out his other setups on our championship level desktop application. Our next week, the patch is going to be one of the kings of top lane Darius. As one of the single strongest top laners on this patch due to his ability to 1v1 and 1v2 people, which let's be honest, if you're stuck in the top lane, you're not a champion like Shen or, you know, Soraka, you're not going to impact the more important lanes on the other side of the map. So you better be able to 1v2 when the enemy jungler shows up if you're going to have any chance of actually snowballing out of control and being able to show up to those later team fights and ruin everyone. Which coincidentally is one of the things Darius is best at. He's one of the best champions when it comes to influencing and pressuring his own lane because if you let him 1v1, he's probably going to snowball and win that matchup because he's Darius. And he's going to beat most melee champions. And so when you're a jungler, you're like, oh man, I got to stop Darius from snowballing. But then again, you're like, oh shit, I don't want him to snowball faster by killing me too. So I got to leave him alone. So Darius is a very tricky champion to have to play against. I would highly recommend picking up Darius if you like powerful 1v1 laners who will try and kill the jungler over tracking them. It doesn't really matter where the jungler is when you're playing Darius. You're just going to pop that ghost or ignite or whatever summer spell you like to take and then just kill the jungler if they show up in your lane. So no reason to track them. One of the nice things about picking up Darius in this particular season is just how strong he's been for pretty much all of the season. Even though he's been nerfed a couple of times, it doesn't really matter because the meta currently favors him. So he's likely to continue to be strong for the rest of the season unless he gets massively nerfed, which probably won't happen anytime soon. Last up for this video, we got one of the strongest mid laners left on this patch and that's Fizz. With Diana getting some nerfs and Katarina getting some nerfs, Fizz, especially in low elo, remains the premier snowball assassin. He's got that amazing 1v1 potential, especially when he's 6, you have to respect the fish. And then he has his roaming abilities if you're respecting him too much, and he's got very easy gank setup too. He's just a major threat in the early game no matter how you try and play against him. This is what makes him essentially the definition of what's wrong with mid lane at the moment. He's got insane kill pressure, even even if he's not going to farm a lot. Ever been one shot by a Fizz with 50 CS? Yeah, that happens all the time, even at 15 minutes. So he can just kind of spam roam, kill the bot lane over and over again, and he's just way too safe to do anything about it. He's going to dive your tower and there's nothing you can really do about it. And if you try and gank him in the lane, he's going to troll pull his way out of there. And so it becomes very difficult to deal with a Fizz. He's got way more options to win the game than what you do, especially at lower levels of play. Not to mention this champion's damage is a bit absurd because once you get fed enough off of killing the bot lane over and over, over again, you don't even have to land your ultimate anymore. You can probably just Q in and kill them off of like one auto attack and a W and ignite maybe. I don't know. It's it's Fizz. He, his damage is out of control. That's all I got though. So thanks everyone for watching our 10.10 .10 pick of the patch video. Be sure to check out our other content on this channel as well as at mobilex.gg. As always, I'm your host Adam Moriarty Isles and made the new and old Silicon Gods be with you.